Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're setting up a new Nano Aquascape for the shelf. I have a pretty cool idea for it that I think you guys will love. So without further ado, let's get started. So the plan is to make like a cave slash arch like structure with Dragonstone. I have quite a lot of this stuff lying around. Uh, but whenever you buy Dragonstone, it's always full of clay, so it's quite dirty. We need to wash this first. Okay, so the rocks are all washed. I have a bunch of like big ones and then a top full of like small bits and pieces. I've also moved the tank to the table just so it's a little bit easier to work with. And what we have here is a UNS 30C. So it's measuring 30 by 30 by 30 centimeters. Holds roughly 10 gallons or so. And then the light is a Twinstar 300E series. It's quite a powerful light. I'm thinking of running a little DOI CO2 system as well. So the first step is gonna to be to make our cave with the dragon stones. Now normally I would build my hardscape directly inside the aquarium, but this one is gonna be a little bit more challenging. It's probably also gonna be a lot of gluing involved. So I'm thinking of building the hardscape outside of the aquarium. So I've just cut out a little piece of cardboard that's sort of the same dimensions as the tank itself. So we can build the hardscape on top of this have full access to it and then once it's done we can uh, move it to the tank. So I immediately noticed that we have a bit of an issue. These rocks are way too big for what I have in mind. But that's okay because dragon stones are quite easy to break. Just be careful because it does create a huge mess. Okay, let's try again. I'm really just figuring this out as I go and I'm basically just stacking rocks on top of each other until I find something that looks good. To connect everything I'm using my liquid super glue and cotton pad method. So I take tiny pieces of cotton pad and I wedge them in between the rocks that I want to connect. Then I soak the cotton pad with cyano accolade super glue, wait about 30 seconds and then it's completely stuck together. This method is 100% safe as the super glue becomes rock solid and doesn't leach anything into the water column. Okay, making good progress. I'm basically working on two separate halves. I think that's the safest way to go about it. And right now I want to just do a quick test run, move them both inside the tank and kind of see if I'm going in the right direction. Well, that is not bad for the first try. We already have almost all, both ends connecting each other. So that's looking good. I'm thinking that we should now just move on with the hardscape inside the aquarium because if I'm taking it out again, then this, yeah, we're just never gonna get it in the same position, you know? Now we can add in the substrate, then put the rocks back in and then just start connecting them. Now for the substrate, I wanna try out a new product called APT Start. So these should be like dormant beneficial bacteria as well as nutrients for the plants. I never used it before, so let's open this up and see how it works. Okay, so it's like a two-step process so everything that's in that bag you sprinkle on the bottom then you fill up with water and then you add in everything that's in here so i guess those are the beneficial bacteria and then this is like the food for the beneficial bacteria Okay, substrate is in and both these structures are in as well. Now let's see if we can make them connect at the top. Okay, so I think this is like the main hardscape structure done. We have a nice round cave slash arch, whatever you want to call it. It's actually not touching each other. There's like a small little gap between both of the tips. Doesn't matter. I'm actually thinking of adding some moss later on on top of that arch just to make them look more natural. Yeah, I think the next step is to just work on the, uh, the small details.
Okay guys, hard scap's done, looking good. Really, really happy with that. So we can now move on to planting. So I have a pretty cool selection. And of course, as always, plants are sponsored by Dental Plants. So I have four different types of in vitros and two different pot plants. So we have the beautiful Crypt Flamingo, got the nice Bucephalandra Ceremu Brown, of course some Dwarf Hairgrass, and we have a Rotala Indica, so this is like a very short stem plant. And then we have two more types of Rotalas. We have the Laos, this one will stay nice and green. And then we also have the, uh, the Atra, and this one will turn nice and red. Now to clean these in vitro, I always just like to grab a little bowl with some sort of like lukewarm water, because all these plants are like sitting in like a gel. So then it's quite easy to take the gel off. Just kind of soak it in the lukewarm water, kind of massage it a little bit, and then it will just come right off, you know. The dwarf hairgrass is usually the most difficult because it's like really like grown in there and mixed with the gel, but yeah, if you just kind of like soak it in there for a little bit, and it's okay if there's like a little bit of gel left, like you don't have to get everything off it, but just get the majority out of there and then you should be fine. And for the potted plants, I would just like to Remove this card, then take my pin set and kind of wedge it in the rock wall. Kind of just push it out like that. Just so you don't really have to like pull it by the, the stems, you know. And then the rock wall always, is always like two parts. I like to like split it in half, kind of open it up. And just peel it away as much as possible. And then once you've done that, you can also like dip it in water. Take your tweezers again and kind of like clean the, clean the roots a little bit. Again, you don't have to take everything off, but just try to get the majority, you know. Okay, so plants are prepared, so we can now finish the layout. So I'll start with the dwarf hairgrass in the foreground, kind of framing the, the path, and then I'll make my way towards the background. Okay guys, that's the planting done as well. Really, really happy with that. Can't wait to see how this is going to grow in. Uh, as a final step, I've added one more plant all the way in the back, uh, the normal hair grass, so the, the slightly taller one. I think if that grows in, it will give a really cool effect. It will also kind of help with that sense of depth in the layout. So yeah, we can now move the tank back to the shelf, fill up our water, and then just see how it's going to develop. You guys will of course see that at the end of the video, so don't go anywhere. Fast forward, it's now been 12 days since the tank was set up. It's not ready yet, but I kind of want to give you guys an update in between. Normally when I do a tutorial, I kind of finish the tank, fill up with water, and immediately after that there's like a jump cut to 3-4 weeks later when the tank is actually finished. This time I want to kind of do an update in between, just to kind of show you guys the things that are going well and the things that are not going so well. Yeah, so on day one I've added the hang on the back filter, I've added some CO2, and I've also added that blue satchel from the APT start. And now 12 days later, things are looking good. Um, I have done, I think maybe three water changes, like three 20% water changes. 
Besides that, not much. And so far, plants are doing good. The stem plants on the back have definitely grown a lot. Uh, some plants are not doing so good though. You can see that the crypt flamingo, some of the leaves have started to melt, but that's okay. I'm sure it's going to bounce back. Uh, what's not going to bounce back though is the uh, Rotala indica. You can see there some uh, some brown melted uh, yeah parts. I've also already removed a lot of it, and some of the boost is also starting to melt. And this one over here, and the one on the back is completely uh, completely melting as well. So we'll probably just replace those plants. But yeah, besides that, it's doing quite alright. I'm going to remove the plants that are melting and just replace them with something else. And I'm also thinking of trimming the rotan. I just kind of get them into that uh, the same shape as the arch, basically. Okay, maintenance session completed. I've replaced the Rotala Indica with some Anubias. I've also trimmed the Rotala in the back and replanted some of the tops. So that's all done. So in the next clip, you guys are going to see this tank in another week or two weeks from now. Another two weeks have passed and the tank is looking pretty good. We finally have some inhabitants as well. I've added a small group of red cherry shrimp as well as six beautiful rice fish. I was keeping these rice fish in my balcony pond but summer here in the Netherlands has been one major disappointment with low temperatures and lots of rain. So I thought let's just bring these beautiful fish inside. I also noticed some baby rice fish in the pond so hopefully with the adults removed, they have a bigger chance of survival. All in all this was a really fun little project and slightly different from my usual style. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. As always, thanks for watching, don't forget to smash that like button and I'll see you next time.